I think that South got something to say statement that Dre made at the Source Awards. I think that's overblown by the East Coast, right? Like, down here, we were doing our thing, right? Wasn't even thinking about that shit. You know what no, I'm saying? No, like, no, 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 no I want to finish real quick. Because it's like, it's one of those things where that was a we want acceptance from New York type thing, which was cool, and it was fine. But they came back and was like, yo, we're making ATL. You know what I mean? And that is the album that we say is probably their most boom back album, right? But Atlanta had its own scene. It wasn't like we were out here like, yo, man, you got to listen to got to listen. I think that was more of a, and I say this respectfully, I think that was more of a personal mission for Andre as opposed to a whole region saying that. You know what I mean? I do not agree with that just because... Okay, so because the way the way Atlanta they, made it in the no, South I period, think, the South think, made it as no, a no, collective. I think, no, I think he was speaking from a place of feeling uh, denied and having to conform at the time. Like, like I always tell people, it's like on Southern Playalistic, it's like, well, they sound like hieroglyphics, which is like a West Coast thing. Mm-hmm. But there are attempts to be lyrical, like an East Coast thing, because mm-hmm. they're really just trying to fit in because we really don't have a hardcore identity outside of Scarface. And I think that's one of the reasons why, and, and I'm going to say this as an Andre fan, as somebody who, I mean, it's my favorite rapper growing up, right? While they were in the prime of their careers, I'm Ta-da. born and raised here, right? But I think that because his style and his approach feeds very well into an East Coast hip-hop listener's uh, psyche and the way they listen to hip-hop, I think that's why they hold him so high. Whereas His somebody bar- like an MJG might not do that for you. You know what I'm I saying? Told you. I, said, I said this on a previous show, Mike. He's the first guy that we could take to the ball, like the New York ball. Andre's but the first is that important, that take- though? Huh? How important is that, though? No, no, no. That is the birthplace of hip hop, and so being That's able fine. to take somebody. No, no, no it's fine. And I love New York. You know I do. But it's like I think as I've grown, and it, it, we even talked about this the other day. It's like there are more standards to what I'm seeing is as opposed to just the East Coast standard. Like this is exactly why Tupac doesn't get revered as a quote-unquote lyricist because he doesn't rap like an East Coast MC, right? Well, well, okay, but okay, see, but even with that, how about this? Andre checks more of a technical East Coast MC box than Tupac does. Exactly. He does. And, yes, he and, does. And, and but, some people and, will and, tell and, you he's a better on. lyricist than Pac. That's what I'm about Pac. to say, though. Yeah. And, even, and even with that being said, most East Coast dudes, if not from Brooklyn, will still hold Tupac higher. And so it's this is what I keep trying to tell you. It's I like almost think that's like, by circumstance, though. I think yeah, that's yeah, but the I lack think, of material. But I, think, but I think you're missing my point. Go ahead. And what my, no, no, no. Listen, what my, what my point is, is, is that, well, he got us a different type of seat at the table, so to speak, in terms of our respectability. You get what I'm saying? Like, because he was a caliber of MC that they heard on AT Aliens, how about this? When people are like, is Andre better than Prod? Remember we were having the whole, is Andre better than Prodigy? Mm-hmm. In 96 conversation. And, and even I told you, it's like, no, it's still Prodigy. But no, the fact that that was a conversation for a Southern MC against somebody like a Prodigy was a whole thing. That's legit. And we can't take that away from Dre either. No, that was I'm a not thing. taking anything away from Dre. I just think that... But, but he was the first person to have it like that, though, Mike, down here. And so that's a moment for people. And here's how big of a moment it is. Big Boy on Kill Jill literally references, the South got something to say, and now y'all niggas can't get y'all ball back. So Big Boy is even yeah. referencing it on his solo album, not just years later, like... 15 years later, like 16, 17 years later, Big Boy's bringing it back up. So it's relevant as hell. It means something. It was at the end of Akumana and everything. You know what I'm saying? But it means I, something. Jay Shore with the Super Chat says, turns out Andre had nothing to say. Y'all wild. Um, <laughs> I wow. lost my train of thought. Me no, too. no, no. That's... This is the thing. And, and again, you know how 
how high I hold Akumina is probably pound for pound the best hip hop album I've heard end to end, right? Musically, lyrically, concept wise, creatively, yada yada. And it's at the very end of that. But I think that when that was said, and maybe it's because the Source Awards wasn't televised and it wasn't one of those things that was broadcasted, you know, to the masses at the time. Me being in Atlanta and being in the South, I didn't see that change anything. Or maybe it just didn't change anything for me as a listener. I didn't see our scene change. I didn't see where it was like, okay, especially so- at that time, Atlanta artists or Southern artists weren't like, yo, we got to do something to appeal to New York. Like, I didn't see that happen. You so know this I mean? is what I'm saying about, okay, so I'm going to tell you something. And maybe one of the best things that happened to me as like a hip hop listener, Southern wise, is that, well, I moved to Charlotte. I spent a year in South Carolina, actually. Okay. What part? Um, Hopkins. Oh. My family from Low Country. Hopkins, South Carolina. I don't Lower Ridge. That. I went to Lower Richland Middle School. Lower Richland High School uh, used to be a really, really big basketball program, like nationally ranked. Okay. Like when I was in high school at West Charlotte, I used to watch Lower Richland. Lower Richland was like ranked number two when we were ranked number one, okay. actually. But my family's from the area. My grandma Sarah live on Dry Branch Road. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's another conversation for another day. But I came to Charlotte in September of 93. I only spent about nine, ten months in South Carolina. Before that, Mike, I was in the east side of Atlanta, Mm -hmm. in downtown Atlanta. Like, I grew up downtown and east side to Lithonia, like all the way up. You know what I'm saying? We literally went, like, from Piedmont Road all the way up to Lithonia. You know what I'm saying? It was like a matriculation and then a matriculation back down the east side, the Memorial Drive. So when I'm hearing Outkast, in North Carolina, I'm hearing Players Ball late 93 because that's the Christmas album shit, okay? Mm-hmm. Right. So when Andre's talking about, we went to Underground, we seen a lot of hoes around. My cousin Mark, the one that put me onto The Greatest Adventures of Slick Rick, the one that put me onto hip hop, that's where he used to take me because Underground used to be popping, Pop. you know? Yeah, I know. And so as soon as Andre said that, I was hooked on them. I hadn't been in Atlanta in about 18, 19 months. My birth certificate says Charlotte. I don't know shit but Atlanta right. at 12, 13 years old. And so when he said that, immediately connected and drew to them. And so when Southern Playalistic went out the same thing. And so the effects for somebody that was outside of Atlanta, Mike, for Southern Playalistic, for somebody that had been in Atlanta, was heavy. Mm-hmm. But listen to what I'm saying. It wasn't heavy for everybody like that. But when I, I'm the one that put niggas on west on the west side of Charlotte on the Benzo or Beamer and cell therapy, because I was playing record. cast like that because it was the only piece of Atlanta that I had on the west side of Charlotte. My family from the west side of Charlotte. I ain't from the west side of Charlotte. But Cooper's from West Boulevard. I'm not, and so I'm I'm putting people on the outcast. I remember I never forget when I gave Mike Pegues my tape. With, with cell therapy and Benzo or Beamer, he's like, he's like the shit Outcast got on the other side better than cell therapy. I was like, Ooh. might be two incredible well, records, be. man. These are these are five out of five records. Ten out of these 10 are five out of five records, Mike. But this these is are, this is us. This is me and Mike McGee's on the school bus. Mike McGee's yeah. was nationally ranked as a point guard when we was in ninth grade. He was like the best baller in our neighborhood, like. Like, so, so cast was super important to me, but listen to what I'm about to say. When they came out with AT Aliens, when they came out with Elevators, everything that I was feeling in 93, 94 about Outcast, Charlotte felt 96. Boulevard Homes in Little Rock, the summer of 96, played nothing but Outcast. You did not hear no fucking It Was Written, no reasonable doubt. Mm-hmm. My cousin M6 was the only nigga playing Muddy Waters. They thought the nigga was crazy. He was riding around on his bicycle playing Muddy Waters on his headphone. Niggas thought he was tripping because he wasn't playing the cast. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And so the way that I felt about them from living in Atlanta in, in 93, 94, oh, they, they they had taken over the South and transferred that feeling with AT Aliens. That's why they AT were our stars. Was so hot. They were our stars. I mean, you could actually turn yeah. on BET and MTV and actually see yeah. them. But, because this but is Dre the time. was an MC, but yeah. no, Dre was the caliber of MC. It's like it made niggas proud. And so all niggas wanted to do was play outcast because Dre was the first MC. It's like, no, 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 we might have the best MC in the game. Play his shit. Play the best MC. 
Mad Max with the Super Chat says, we don't hold Dre high in uh, NY. Kids my age like T.I. more than Andre. Andre yeah. closer to James Brown than uh, an East Coast MC. Uh, T.I. slash Ludacris is closer to East Coast style. Okay, well, wow. y'all, they probably That's know. Wild. Now, they probably know Dre from Love Below and Beyond or Stankoni and Beyond. Now, I will say this, and I was going to say this even before I read that comment. The only other person that I remember coming through the door, making it important to be an MC to NY standards, was T.I. When he came in the door with, I'm serious, I remember reading the article in the source where he was talking about one of his missions was to be thought of as an MC to the degree where he could go up to a cipher in New York specifically and battle whoever or rhyme with whoever. But see, his okay. father was from New York too. So, I mean, we find that out later on. So maybe that's where that's coming from. We all wanted respect from the Source magazine and stuff like that. And we knew based on, it was kind of an unwritten rule, based on how they were rating their albums and rating their MCs, you kind of had to come with that type of East Coast flavor to get that kind of recognition gonna, from that no, publication. I'm going to squab with you about that. And I'm going to tell okay. you why I'm going to squab with you. Somewhere between the Quim and I and Stankonia, on one of those albums, I feel like it might have been after Equimini, Double XL is talking about Dre's lack of passion to write. And it literally mentions the fact how the, who, somebody, listen to what they say. This is Double XL talking. Might arguably be the best MC in the game, and he mm. doesn't want to rap. They were saying that about Andre. That's a New York publication that precedes Ti by years. So Ti is not that. Oh no 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 no. Ramsey. That's not what I'm. Oh, you're talking to him. Are you talking to me? No, no I no, know Ti is not is saying, that. So we get some clarity because he's younger. Because so yeah, he doesn't yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you understand oh, yeah, yeah, it though, yeah. but he may not know. It's like no, 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 no. Dre had it like that long before Tip and Luda had even like popped up in the minds and of the Ti. Will, and Ti because, and Luda will tell you that. <laughs> right, right. Ti and Luda will tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Because what he did on ATLs and Equipment I really made people think it's like is the best MC in the game in the South because Scarface had respect, but nobody really thought he was better than Nas or better than Jay, or Red Man, or Method Man with Dre. It was a more legit argument. That shit, Elevators. Elevators changed everything. Yeah, after that Elevators, Dre Elevator became my everything. favorite MC. That last verse on Elevators changed everything. Yeah, after Elevators, Dre became my favorite MC. Like like I said, after Thought Process, I knew he was coming. But after Elevators, and his work on AT Aliens, See, Dre became my favorite MC. Man. And the Quim and I just took it to the next niggas. level. Niggas up top didn't hear thought process. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They heard elevators. Niggas in Cali didn't hear thought process. They heard elevators. Yeah. So when they heard elevators, it was like, the fuck? LP with the Super Chat says, it's the Mecca, Mike. If you make reggae, uh, you need to be accepted in Jamaica, especially yeah. back then. Getting respect from where it started matters. I it mean, still listen, matters. Respect is respect, oh. right? And I'm not talking about Weird. respect, and I think that respect is something that could go all the way around, right? But I think that conforming is a whole nother thing because even when you look at some of the east coast publications did the great music some of the best hip-hop music that ever came out came out of the west coast at that time they weren't giving it the respect and credence that it deserved looking back at it that's not true america's most got five mics in the source because it was made in new york now let's talk about the chronic doggy style and death certificate fair you're, no, no, and the bomb you're squad totally, made no, America's You're most. totally no. You're totally right, and I'm wrong. Those are all five Mike albums. Yeah, those are all five Mike albums. You're totally right. Because They're you know the fair. way those albums. But were, they weren't being fair to Wu Tang either, Mike. So we can't say it's a West Coast bias, though. That's you what know I mean. What? And it's I like, think Wu Tang's issue with Staten Island. I think if Wu Tang, as a collective, was from one of the major boroughs, it might have been a little different. That's not no. Okay, you don't think so? so? Listen to what? No, I don't. I don't feel that that's totally fair because Staten Island is the fifth borough. Long Island's not a borough. That's where EPMD and Rakim is from. That's true. And Rakim's getting five mics. Well, like, he kind of so came I, along before the publication too. But I feel you're right. No, I get. I get what you're saying too. It was almost like they didn't want to let Staten Island in, but it's like, well, no, they kind of. 
how about this? The infamous got four and a half mics, and it's like when you listen to the infamous, it's like, oh well, it's not illmatic, and that's what's wrong with the infamous. Right. That's still a five mic album, the purple tape, same thing. Mm -hmm. And so there was some illmatic syndrome going on with those guys. And here's my problem with that. And here's where you do have a valid point. Oh well, they rated all those albums and get, didn't give those album five mics before illmatic. I was came just out. about to say that, yeah. Because Into the is, you can't even use four Illmatic. Is, yeah. That's four and a half. Doggy Style got four mics. I still don't know how that shit happened. Because he's from that the West Coast. And it's dark and hell is hot. I don't understand that shit. You know what we should do? You listen to like Doggy Style or it's dark and hell is hot and think that that shit is a four. It's like beyond me. Like, I don't understand what We should read that to. article on our next episode. We're doing what, Doggy Style? Yeah. We should read that. I don't the... want to read that blasphemy. Yeah, let's read that article because I want to see how they go. I got four and a half. Yeah. Which I can kind of see because I don't love the I don't love the end of the chronic, but it's still like you know it's the chronic. It's like Mike the first seven songs of the the first seven songs on the chronic is probably like the hardest shit like ever. Yeah, like the start off the album. And then you like, got to think about the first fact seven that songs are like those first seven songs are all like they're not fives, they're tens out of fives. Shit is like, crazy. Like all of the records, the shit crazy. Yeah, because again, shit crazy. the day the niggas took over. Little ghetto boy, D's nuts, G oh, thing. Did Breaking Adams get five mics? And I know All for One got five mics, right? I still love All for One. I, don't... I love All for One, but come on, like, man. No me, one's going to listen to people... All for One and The Chronic and say this one's five and this one's not. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going mean, to like, get both I mean, five, let's be five, honest. Five. How can you listen to Let the Rhythm Hit Him and then listen to The Chronic exactly. and tell me The Chronic's not it's five mics? It's an East Coast mics. bias. Let the Rhythm it. Hit Him five mics if we're just being honest. It, yeah, if we're just being honest, it's an East Coast bias there, man. It is what it is. Right. The Chronic's better than Let the Rhythm Hit Him. It is. No just one's going to tell you any different. Now, the, bar the, only one that's gonna, the only one that's going to compete with The Chronic is paid in full. Corey Bridges with the Super Chat says, uh, T.I. Yeah. Is, the, is the best rapper. He has the best catalog. Overall. He doesn't have the best catalog. That's Scarface. But let's go. Okay, let's get into it. Last thing I want to say about the Method Man interview. Okay. Method Man and Havoc are working on a project. That's some I'm rap I'm looking shit. forward to that. That's going to be very nice. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. Because for me, in my personal opinion, I think that's one of the things that Method Man has kind of lacked over the years is consistent production. And Havoc's very consistent with his production. I, you know what I think happened? I think that RZA got a chance to reset after the flood, starting with Return to the 36 Chambers. Mm -hmm. And Built for Cuban Links and Liquid Swords is the stride, and Iron Man is what's left. That's why we say the run is so short and why he was burnt out. The reason, and, and, and I'm going to apologize for this because I was wrong, the reason that he's burnt out is because he had already had them lined up and he had to go line them up again. He probably had about another three or four years worth of material of work that we didn't hear that was just as epic as what we heard beat-wise right. that he lost. Mm. You know what I think? And, and I'm with you on that, too. I think okay. that on another note, I think Method Man and maybe the rest of the clan collectively just got way too dependent on RZA. And I feel like that happened to um, Goody Mob when it comes to organized noise, too. I think Goody Mob got very dependent on organized noise in a way that Outkast did, you know. And when organized wasn't there to work with them, you know, bell to bell, Outkast was able to still make material and still change up their sound. I think Ghost is the one that kind of was able to go on and work without RZA doing everything. But I think everybody else kind of got somewhat dependent on, you know, RZA. And I think they kind of went as he went. No, I I think Ray is the first one that actually stepped out, actually. I mean, successfully, though, because the mobility is not. Yeah, it's not good. No. Outside of Sneakers and yeah. Live from New York. Yeah. There's a couple other joints on there. My favorite Dreads on there, I think. That was pretty dope. Well, if you want to um, count Old Dirty... Stepping out on nigga, please. That's viable. That's the shit. Nigga, please is. I like nigga, please is fire. A again, dirty's a whole different animal. You know what but I'm hold saying? On. <laughs> Listen, hold on. No, no, no. Okay, so this is where production matters. First of all, RZA still has tracks on nigga, please. I believe three, two or yeah. three. And who handled most of the production on nigga, please again, Mike? Was it the Neptunes? 
Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. But you know, they weren't a name at that point. Tune. That's why nigga, please sound good. Great rappers still need great producers. I don't yeah. know what'd be wrong with niggas. Yeah. Like niggas yeah. be acting like, no, 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 I can rap over anything. It's like, yeah, yeah, you but can. But I think rap some great anything, lyricists think but if that you way. Want us to listen to the shit and the shit to be great. I think Method Man feels that way. You, remember, we'll talk about this and we can go on. You remember that one show that Method Man and Red Man had where they were pranking everybody? Yeah. Um, and then they brought Ludacris in there and they had him rapping over that frog beat or whatever. Yeah. And Luda's whole thing was like, man, I can rap over anything. I heard Method Man say that in this Math Hoffa interview too. Because they were talking about trap. Yeah, he's, he's like, I can like, rap no, over he's anything. Like, you know, he's like, I met the man. I can rap I over anything. I think that's the mentality. Like, sometimes no. they get so caught up in their skill set and how dope they are and how versatile they are, they're not even listening to the beats anymore. You hold know on. what I'm saying? So, hold on. So, that listen listen what I'm about to say. That's what Nas and Method Man really suffer from. Yeah. They're so dope, and they know that they're so dope. That they're so confident that if the beat is just halfway there, enough for them to catch a riff and a cadence, in their mind, and this is what he's thinking, well, I'm Method Man. I'm the front man for the greatest lyrical group that ever lived. I have one of the greatest rep. Like, the shit that we talk about is the shit that he thinks because it's the fucking truth. I got one of the best deliveries ever. I got one of the best flows ever. I'm the front man for the Wu-Tang Clan. I went platinum with Mary J. Blige and Red Man in the same fucking summer. Who the fuck are you? I'm Method Man. Yeah, he thinks that way when he rap. And when you think that way when you rap, you might not give a fuck about the beat as much because you're Method Man. Jay-Z doesn't think like that. Straight up. Jay Z doesn't think like that. Kanye doesn't think like that. They think about the full product. I would say they can't too. rap like Method Man. They can't rap like Method Man. You don't think Jay Z can rap like Method Man? No. He, you know, this is what I'll tell you. And you know, Method okay. Man is my favorite rapper growing up. This Method is what Man has the tell much you. better okay, voice. How about this? Method okay. Man has the better so this voice. This is what I'm saying. The difference between Jay Z and Method Man, and listen to what I'm saying. Like, Jay Z can't do shadow boxing. But Method Man can't do dead presidents and the evils. And the degree of difficulty on the evils and dead presidents is higher because that's full three verse song structure. Yeah. Method Man so can't do girls, Jay. girls, girls either. But don't, but, but don't get it twisted. Jay can't do shadow boxing. Not many Jay people can't can. do ice cream. Jay can't jump on no hook and make it no classic. No, no, no. Nah. Now no that I'll give you. No ice cream. Yeah. Putting Jay on no hook ain't about to make no shit no classic, no, is it? Do my ladies run this mother? All right. Jay Short with the right. Super Chat says, why don't meth work with Apollo Brown? Underrated. That'd be a great collaboration. I, I would love to Stolly see that. last year. Sounded good with Stolly. Yeah? 